Are you dealing with a narcissist and you have to ever get in the car with them? They terrorize you in lots of different ways, but they definitely use the car as one of those ways. And in this video, I'm going to be talking away about the way that narcissists terrorize you in cars. Hey there, I'm Rebecca Zung, and I'm an attorney. I'm also a narcissist negotiation expert, and I have written a couple of best-selling books, Negotiate Like You Matter and Breaking Free, a step-by-step -step divorce guide. I also have a third book that is in pre-order, Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist and Win. And it is my mission on this planet to help you break free from whatever toxic relationship you may be in, business or personal, to help you negotiate your best life. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell because I release brand new videos every single day. And that way you will get notified when I release a brand new video or I go live or I'm doing an event or anything like that because I want you to get free, free advice, free content. All right. Narcissists terrorize you in lots of different ways, but they terrorize you, especially when you get into a car. Why do they do that? Why do they do that? They love to do that because you're in a confined area and now you can't go anywhere. And so all the supply is for them and them alone. Remember, they love to manipulate you. They love to see you squirm. They love to control you, to degrade you, to, to get that supply. That's what they live for. You know, they, they live for many different types of supply, but supply is the name of the game. That's what, that's their food. I, I would say it's their food, their lifeblood, their oxygen. It's the only thing that they need. When you get into a car, here you go. You're off to the races. And, you know, so what happens is you're going along and you say something the wrong way or you look at them wrong or whatever the conversation turns you know you're on your way to a party or a dinner or somebody's house and depending on what is going on their mood may be a certain way and they may or may not want to go to this place. So it, it may be that there's already some sort of passive aggression going on. This is very important, especially if they are driving. Now, if they're driving this car, they've got control of the situation, which is already a problem, okay? because now they've got control over you in that way. There's so many things involved with that because, you know, if they don't want to go to this place, wherever it is that you're going, then there's that, that underlying resentment that's just below the surface, just below the surface. They could be jealous of the fact that the attention's not going to be on them. Jealous of the fact that your attentions are going to be elsewhere. Jealous of the fact that attentions are going to be somewhere else. You know, I mean, there's just so much that they, they could be feeling like they are going to be less than the people that are at that party or whatever it is. Maybe the people that are going to be there are more successful than they are. So there's all kinds of things that are going on, or it just could be that wherever it is that you're coming from, they're upset about what happened there, or it could be that you're just fighting about something else in general. 
it couldn't it might not be anything that happened at a place that you were just at or is has anything to do with where you're going it could be that you're fighting about something in your lives all of this in consideration now they're driving the car so they get to use the fact that they're driving this car as an opportunity to control you. So what's one of the ways that they do that? They can start driving erratically. They can start driving violently. So that's number one. They can actually scare you in that way, especially if you're on a freeway or something like that. They can actually start going, oh, okay, you know, and, and then you're like scared. Please don't do this. Please don't drive. Please don't drive quickly. What are you doing? Please slow down. And, and they, they actually think this kind of stuff is funny. And, and that's the thing that's evil about it, sort of maniacal about it. They, they enjoy the process of watching you squirm. It's, it's dangerous a lot of times. So, you know, that's number one. Number two is they can oftentimes threaten to kick you out of the car when you don't know where you are. And I've seen, especially, you know, in my days as a divorce attorney, where I've heard stories of that they have actually let, t- taken that step where they stopped and made the person get out of the car and left them where they didn't know where they were. Or maybe it's miles and miles away from home or something like that. Now, nowadays, I guess if you have your cell phone, you can call, you can call for an Uber or whatever. But I've actually also heard stories of where they threw them out, they didn't have their cell phone. Or, you know, the other thing that they might do is take your belongings and throw them out the window, take your cell phone, throw it out the window, things like that. That's something else that they might do. All right. So that's number two. Number three is that they can threaten to turn the car around and not go to the event. You know, a lot of times once that narcissistic rage comes flying out that their narcissistic injury is triggered, you know, because that that limbic brain has taken over that emotional part of their brain has taken over. They don't see reason anymore. It's just that that rage has taken over and that's it. That's what's happening. You are at the effect of their rage at that point. And honestly, at that point, it may be better for you to not be in that car anymore. You know, where I said number two, where they, you know, make you get out of the car. If they, if you're out of that car and you've got your phone, it may be better for you at some point, because number three is they threaten to turn the car around, threaten to not go to the event. And a lot of times maybe they do that, turn the car around not go to the event, especially if it's something that's very, very important to you. You've dressed up for it. It's going to make you look very bad if you don't attend or if you're late. Maybe it's something for your work or something like that, you know, especially if it's going to make you look bad if you don't go. You know, they, they love to do things like that. So that's number three. Number four is they might pick a fight with you and then just not let up. They might just pick at you and keep going and just this constant verbal assault, especially if it's a long car ride. And why did you do that? And I I want answers and you never told me this. And you know, and, and just go on and on and on and, 
as many times as you try to give them answers and I never said that and you're twisting my words and, you know, it'll go on and on and on. It just will not let up because they know that you are in this confined space. And so, you know, your stomach is in knots and you've got this pain in your chest and, you know, you probably have a headache and you probably can't breathe, but there you are, you're stuck there because you're in this small confined space and it's so tiring, right? I mean, and if any of you have seen this before, Give me a totally in the comments. And I would love to know what kinds of things you guys have seen too. You know, put it in the comments because I'm sure that you guys have seen something like this as well. So that's number four. Number five is the opposite of number four. Number five might be that you want to talk about something and you say, you know, This has been in my mind. I really want to talk about something. This is really important to me. Please answer me on something. And then they just refuse to talk at all. Utter silence. Absolutely clam up. Won't speak to you at all. Refuse. Refuse to talk at all. Refuse to give you any answers. Just look forward as if you don't exist whatsoever, completely ignore you as if you're not even present. On one hand, it's start a fight, not let up, at you, at you, at you. Or the other one is just completely shut you out as if you don't exist whatsoever. So that's number five, stonewall you completely. Either way, it's you don't get the satisfaction of having healthy communication. You know, contrast that with healthy communication, which is what you deserve to have as a human being, which is what your soul deserves and what you know you deserve to have as a human being, which is why you're here watching this video, by the way, because deep in your gut, you know that that is what you are supposed to be having. I do want you to know that I have phrases for disarming narcissists. And regardless of where you are in life or who you're dealing with, you can start to place some boundaries So grab your free phrases for disarming narcissists at disarmthenarc.com, which is my gift to you, disarmthenarc.com. And join my free private Facebook group, by the way, which is Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. And make sure you start to get the help and support that you need. Okay. And then number six is physical abuse, which is completely not okay. So if they start to hit you, if they start to smack you, that is completely a non-starter, completely a non-starter. And that's when you absolutely just need to say, "I, I need to be done with this relationship completely. I mean, really, it's not just boundaries at that point. It's go and, you know, start to plan for your exit any rate, if you do need therapy and you don't have access to therapy and you're, you're looking for an online type of therapy, we do have a sponsor on this channel, which is BetterHelp. And you can access that at betterhelp.com forward slash Rebecca Zung. And we receive commissions on that. It doesn't cost you any extra. We just want you to have access to the help and support that you need. And mm-hmm. if you haven't subscribed to this channel, Make sure that you do that now. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. The next video that I suggest that you watch is get out of the the games that narcissists play before they even start. So before you even get in that car, before you even start this whole craziness, 
that's going to help you so much. So get out of the narcissist games before they even start. And remember that today is a great day to start negotiating your best life. And I will see you in that next video. I'll see you right on over there. All right, I'm Rebecca Zung, and I will see you there.